How was your weekend? If you have savings in an American bank or if you work for an American bank, chances are you spend the last few days worrying about your finances. That's because another U.S. bank has collapsed. We're talking about the First Republic Bank. It is the second largest bank failure in American history and the third bank failure since March this year. First Republic has been teetering for weeks now. Two months back, it got a cash injection. Eleven banks came together to save it. They injected $30 billion into First Republic, but the bank could not be saved. So this weekend, American regulators made some tough decisions. They took over First Republic, and now J.P. Morgan Chase will take over its assets. This has triggered more uncertainty. Is the U.S. banking crisis ending? Or is it getting worse? It started with the Silicon Valley Bank. We told you about it. It was the first American bank to collapse this year, the Silicon Valley Bank. Then another bank fell, the Signature Bank in New York. Days later, First Republic shot into headlines. This was in the month of March. The bank had lost some $100 billion. There were mass withdrawals. Depositors began to flee. And now this bank is being bought. It's quite a dramatic story, in fact. First Republic is into private banking. It mostly serves the wealthy. The bank was started in 1985 with less than 10 employees. By July 2020, it was the 14th largest bank in the U.S. It had 80 offices, 80, 80 offices in seven American states and a staff of more than 7,200 people. It looked like a solid bank until crisis hit and it began to crumble. For perspective, look at these numbers. In January 2022, that is last year, one share of First Republic was trading at $200. In April 2023, this year, last month, one share was down to less than $5. So from $200 to less than $5, that's a fall of over 95%. And it's not like the bank did not try to avert the crisis. In the last few months, it tried to cut costs and sell assets. It, decide, it decided to fire 25% of its staff to lower the amount of outstanding loans and curb non-essential activities. Plus, it got a rescue package, the $30 billion I told you about. Eleven banks gave this money in the form of deposits to First Republic, but it seems none of it was enough. And last week, the regulators took a call. They were going to take over the bank, and this weekend they pulled the trigger. After hectic activity, a buyer has been found. It will be J.P. Morgan. It will take over most of the assets of First Republic. This includes more than $100 billion in deposits and almost $230 billion in other assets. This includes loans and different kinds of securities. And with that, another messy bank takeover in America is now complete, which brings us to the next question. Is the banking crisis now over? Or is it just beginning? Is it getting worse from here? Honestly, it's hard to say, but here's something that we can say for sure. This crisis was avoidable, and the blame for it should go to America's central bank, the U.S. Federal Reserve. It failed to act. And these are not my words. This is an admission from the central bank itself. Good afternoon. They have released a report, an assessment of the Fed's response to the crisis, and this report highlights some clear shortcomings. It says there was a lack of oversight, and U.S. officials failed to anticipate the threat. In fact, let me quote from that report. Federal Reserve supervisors failed to take forceful enough action. SVB's failure, that's Silicon Valley Bank, its failure demonstrates that there are weaknesses in regulation and supervision that must be addressed. Supervisors did not fully appreciate the extent of the vulnerabilities as Silicon Valley Bank grew in size and complexity. When supervisors did identify vulnerabilities, they did not take sufficient steps to ensure that Silicon Valley Bank fixed those problems quickly enough. So they're talking about Silicon Valley Bank, but it applies to the larger banking crisis in America. The Federal Reserve issued its long-awaited report on the cause of the Silicon Valley Bank failure. And while it put the, um, the failure squarely in the hands of management and its board for failing to oversee a safe and sound business plan, uh, the Fed did put some heat on itself that its own bank regulators did not respond quickly enough and forcefully enough to conditions on the ground. So the U.S. Central Bank messed up and bankers around the world paid a price for this. You may remember these headlines. This was right after the collapse of Silicon Valley. Global banks lost 
$459 billion. Financial stocks took a nosedive. The crisis traveled as far as Europe. It claimed the Swiss banking giant. Credit Suisse was taken over by rival UBS and it brought back memories of 2008. The global financial crisis of 2008, of course, it was much worse than what we're seeing right now, but it confirms our worst fears. When America sneezes, the world catches a cold. When American financial system makes a mistake, the world foots the bill for it.